Okay, hey, welcome back to CEP Live on Facebook. We had just a little bit of a technical glitch. One of the kind of frustrating parts about doing new and exciting things is that you're, you're at the whim of the Wi-Fi network. And so we had a little bit of hitch there, but I think we're back on online. Um, so we'll put these two videos together, but as a reminder, if, if this is the second part and you haven't watched the first one, we're here today with Modi Reaver from Kansas Interfaith Action. And um, there we go. <laughs> um, and Modi has done an excellent job of talking about what Kansas Interfaith Action does and their policy priorities. And we were just digging into Modi's tips for effective civic engagement. And so that's where we're going to start off now. Modi, what are your best tips for civic engagement? Okay, so first of all, I think the most important thing is to be organized. Um, I think it's very difficult for people to make change as individuals or even small uh, account. Uh, um, conglomerations of individuals, I and mean, when we see change made on a, on a scale that is actually responsive to the issues that we're facing, it's because people were organized. And the latest example of that is the teacher strike in, L in LA, there were the red state teacher strikes earlier than that, and that's people coming together in a mass to demand positive change, and they win when that happens. You know, we don't have a lot of that, um, in, we haven't had a lot of that in Kansas, um, starting, starting, starting to get a little bit more of it, but finding a place to be active, finding a group to be active with, you know, finding a way to be yourself organized is really, is really key. Um, in terms of the actual advocacy, the, of the kind of legislative advocacy that we do, uh, it's very helpful to have uh, an ongoing relationship with your legislator. You know, most of the legislators are people who live in town, um, they, they may have a business, um, they may, you may see them in the grocery store, at the gas station. They should know who you are, you should know who they are. Um, they may say, uh, you know, there's that, there's that nudnik again, you know, with whatever acts you have to grind, but at least they know who you are. Um, and I think that's really important. And it's, and it's really doable um, in Kansas on the scale of the politics here. Uh, particularly outside of, um, out, of, out of the urban, out of the bigger cities, but even within the bigger cities. It's, it's definitely possible to get some, get to somebody like Mike Amex, you know, or mm -hmm. Eileen Horn, um, or you know, Andy Keith, or whatever. Um, but certainly, if you don't live in those places, it's even easier. Uh, so we have a, like a board member, uh, Keith has a board member named Rachel Fryer. She comes from Lindborg. She knows who our um, who our representative is. Actually, not who our senator is, but a representative is Steve Johnson. Um, and so she goes to see her every time she's here, and that. I know they have that relationship, and I think that's that's really important. You know, I have also felt that in, in Kifa's case, it was really important to sort of keep people coming into the building because the culture is building of the building of the state capitol, because the culture is very lobbyist focused. So you'll hear, you know, the legislators will hear from lobbyists, from moneyed interests all, all the time. And the question is, how are they going to hear from somebody else? You know, if you send them an email, that's great. It's easily ignorable. Um, you know, if people are there kind of on an ongoing basis, almost every day I would say, saying, you know, we need to demand Medicaid expansion, we demand cl uh, effective climate policy, you know, we demand a raise in the minimum wage, these are key for that issue of advocacy priorities. Um, you know, you know, has lobby days, you know, getting people, and Wealth Day is a big part of that, getting people in the building to have ongoing conversations with their legislators that they know that you're interested in these issues is really. Uh, is really vital. Um, and then working in your town to sort of collect people around. And part of being organized is helping other people be organized. Thanks for pointing out that Wealth Day is a great way to get engaged, Modi. Um, one of the things that we, we love about Wealth Day is um, that it's, it's a great way for people who maybe aren't real comfortable going to the State House to come and to be a part of a, a group of people um, who are all there to advocate for some aspect of Kansas wealth, so water, energy, air, land, transportation, health. We'll give advocates um, sort of a, a crash course training at the beginning and a little bit of a briefing on what's happening that day. And then we'll even set people up with um, individual meetings with their legislators throughout the day. There will be opportunities to have small group dialogues with um, legislators on the wealth topics. And you get to walk around the rotunda and see some of the absolute best 
environmental and wealth related organizations in Kansas. It's a really great opportunity. We really hope you come and join us on March 12th. In terms of um, that question about like people wanted to come in or, or they were comfortable speaking to people, you know, I, I think it's really important for people to understand that you don't need to have a badge to speak to a legislator. You know, they work for you. You know, you are Kansas, you are Kansans, and that's the only thing, that, that's the only credential that you need. Um, you know, even though the political system is so caked in money um, and, 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 and multinationals and whatever have more, have so much sway in our political system, you don't need to have a qualification to come in and you don't need to be an expert on your issue. You just need to say, I'm a Kansan, this is what I, this is what I think about this issue. If they try to trick you with a question, that tells you what, they, what you need to know about them. But also there's plenty of people around who can help you get the information that you need. You go to a legislator and they say, well, what about this, what about that? You can say, well, I'll get back to you on that. And then come to Zach or come to me or come to um, Jessica and we can give you the answers or help you, help you have that conversation. There certainly are a lot of friendly faces at the Capitol and um, Modi is one of them. If you're up, ever up there, you can, I'm sure, find him doing some good work somewhere. Um, Modi, some, you kind of mentioned it a little bit, sometimes people being uncomfortable talking to the legislators, and, and I love that you said the only credential you need is that you're a Kansan. Um, what are some of the questions that you might encourage someone to ask about your, your topical issues? Some of the questions that I might encourage, well, um, you know, I'm not sure exactly how to, how to answer that question. I mean, I think that one of the ways that we frame things at, at Kansas Interfaith Action is from a moral framing. So we try to really get down past, almost past the point of argument to the point of trying to figure out what the moral crux of the issue is. So in an issue like Medicaid expansion, you know, there's 150,000 Kansans uh, who don't have who work who are in the gap between traditional Medicaid and what expanded Medicaid would be. So the question to a legislator, especially one who opposes it, would be, you know, how do what do you want to do about those 150,000 people? You know, there's lots of reasons not to do something, and people have studied reasons, lists of reasons why not to do something, most of which are answerable. But in any case, you know, is this an issue? If this is an issue, how do you want to address it? You know, I don't think that most of us really are so married to our particular legislative priorities that we wouldn't be able that we wouldn't be willing and able to work with somebody who was trying to solve the question solve the issue from a different direction. Um, you know, certainly on climate change, I mean I don't have all the answers, but the question, you know, the the, the, the issue is when somebody is basically saying, I don't want to deal with this, this issue at all. And then you're really into a, a kind of a moral framing. Um, you know, it is not a moral position to say that I don't want to do anything about climate change. It's an immoral position to say that there's no such thing as climate change, even if the person belongs to a church. You know, I would say, especially if the person belongs to a church. So, um, you know, I think that the, the question is, okay, you don't like this policy, what would you want to do about this? If, you know, do you even acknowledge that this is an issue? You know, I always say that the only, there's only really one question you need to ask a candidate or an elected official, um, and that is, do they accept the scientific consensus of the human causation of climate change? If, you, if they can say yes to that question, then, there, then there's what to talk about. If they say no, it's really an indicator. I've never met anybody who was bad on climate change who was good on Medicaid expansion. You know, it's, it, for some reason, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a weather vane issue. You know, if somebody says no, then you really know that the, what you have to do is you know, work, to work, work for their opponent in the next election. You know, it's kind of like, it's a lost cause. But if, if, you know, if you can say that, can we at least admit that this is an issue, whether it's Medicaid expansion or the minimum wage or gun violence, you know, any of the things that we work on, can, can you say this is a problem? If you say it's a problem, then what would be your solution? Then we can work together. If they say, no, it's not a problem, or no, um, then, then it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to get anywhere. And that's where we've really been especially at the national level, but even in the Kansas legislature for several years now, where people just close their ears and their eyes to, to what's really happening in the world. And that, I find, is a very immoral position, all the more so because of the religiosity that they, that they wear, um, which is a pet peeve of mine. Well, to take a slightly different direction for the last part of our video here. Um, no questions? You, no questions? Do we have any questions? I don't no, know. Well. 
Okay, well, if you're, if you're tuning in now or later today, make sure to post your questions and we'll catch up to them after um, the video and we'll answer anything you have, any questions you have. So Modi, last year, um, CEP and KIFA and several of our partners really tried to encourage people to get out and vote. That was, that was a big push for all of us, just right. not how to vote, but just get out and vote. Um, and oftentimes, as with, uh, with voting or with any kind of campaign, what we find is there's, there's engagement when something's happening, like the RPS, for example, or what have you, and then as soon as the issue is resolved, the engagement falls off. Right. So um, what advice would you give people who wanted to be involved in between elections or in between campaigns to, to really stay engaged in the process? Yeah, that's a really good question because we did see a lot of that um, in the last election where people were really, they, they put so many eggs in the election basket that they burnt out and kind of went away. And I was always, I've been concerned about that ever since basically the first Women's March. You know, mm -hmm. are people going to stay engaged to the next election, you know, in between and then to the next election? And this time, they, you know, you can see from the results of the 2016 election that many, many people were engaged and there's been a big change in a lot of the areas of the country. Johnson County, um, you know, four Republican elected officials just became Democrats um, because, mm -hmm. because of the mood of the country. Um, you know, I lived, in, I lived in Naperville, Illinois, and it was, you know, as red as red could be, um, and now it's got a Democratic congressperson, which is a big change. I mean, it's like Orange County. You know, there's a big change there. Um, you know, the question is whether, so, okay, now Sharice Davids is the, is the elected official there, does that mean we're done? You know, I think that's, all, that's the question you're pointing to. Um, and we need to, and I really don't do electoral, I mean, I did the civic engagement, I did voter to voter, uh, Kifa did voter to voter, and we will again, but I don't really do a lot of electoral because I kind of feel like my job starts when they get into office. Um, and, 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 and that's really what happened in the last election cycle was not that people started getting upset or were engaged in July, but that they were engaged all the way through. Um, you know, women's marches two years in a row and, and, and the Muslim ban, all that kind of stuff that was happening that was bringing people out. Um, you know, and it's not just about who's in the White House, it's about a whole, the whole way this country's being run um, and who's in charge and what they're doing and, what, and not doing. Um, you know, we're starting to see a lot of resistance on climate issues from the, was it the Sunrise Movement? Right? Is, that, is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. That uh, uh, that they're doing that they're doing rallies and civil disobedience around climate change. You know that's really what it's going to take, um, both on a national level um, and even on a state level. Um, so I, I, I go back to the to the question of how people should be civically engaged. You know, in between elections, people should be organized and should be responsive to an organization that they feel comfortable with um, and engaged on an ongoing basis. You know, not that you shouldn't do the electoral work, but our entire focus can't be the electoral work because the electoral work depends on engagement throughout the rest of the year. So what? Mm, sure. And there are so many really amazing organizations in Kansas, like Kansas Interfaith Action or the Climate Energy Project. <laughs> um, and we're always <laughs> eager to have people be engaged in our issues. Well, five years ago, there wasn't very much progressive infrastructure in Kansas. I mean, that was a you know, or moderator progressive infrastructure in Kansas. I mean, we had this well, we had the the RPS stuff, but it wasn't a ton of it wasn't a ton of um, of infrastructure for that. You know, now there's a lot more. Um, it feels like that's. You know, we've also had the Kansas People's Agenda, which is an annual rally that we had. The Poor People's Campaign was on, was last year. There's much more. There's much more stuff happening. The, the question is being able to uh, engage more people and sustain it. And that, I think it's up to everybody to help that happen. Speaking of engagement and opportunities, isn't there a Kifa Day coming up soon? There's a Kifa Day coming up on, on February 7th, so that's next Thursday. It's probably going to be essentially a press conference for about a dozen clergy, um, where we're going to talk about our legislative priorities and meet with some leadership. Um, we're not doing it as a mass turnout thing, but I mean, if you want, if you will, if you want to come, we're, uh, we're, you're very welcome. Go on our website or on our Facebook page, and there's information about that. We'll meet uh, to do the press event at 8:30, and then we'll have meetings throughout the day with different legislative leaders, um, hoping that the uh, the site of 10 or 15 or 20 people in collars will have a 
a, uh, an energizing effect on some of our legislative leaders. We'll see how that works out. But I think we have time with the governor. We have time with some of the legislative leaders. So, um, but there's all kind of issues going on all the time. Um, there's also uh, 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 a civic uh, smart justice lobby day, which is um, criminal justice reform. That's sponsored by the ACLU. That's another coalition we're involved with. And then, of course, in March, there's, there's Wealth Day um, uh, on March 12th. Uh, so those are two that are coming up. Um, there's a number of other ones. Uh, uh, Planned Parenthood is a day. Equality Kansas is a day. It's tomorrow. What I was saying is, you know, sort of keeping people going throughout. You know, the issue with, um, with moderates to progressives is if we're all kind of in our little silos, we can turn out 50 or 100 people for a particular day, but then what happens the day after? So then you're 15 common, you're 15 common, you're 15 common, we never are in the same place at the same time. So I think one of our major goals, and one of the reasons why I why keep as a multi-issue organization, is to try to bring energies together and to see where the intersections of all these issues are, and to bring all the affected people and all the interested people together to, um, to, have, a, to have a lasting, ongoing effect. And that's certainly why we brought this group together to host Wealth Day. So um, Wealth Day is, again, it's coming up on March 12th. And, uh, it starts with a climate vigil. It does start with a climate at vigil. At 8.15 in the morning. And you might see Modi there. You might see Modi there. So <laughs> you want to come in and pray for the environment, for, for, our, for our home, Earth, our home planet. Um, come on in early and we'll, and we'll have a, a, a vigil and a, a reading and a poetry and that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's a really wonderful way to start out the day. Um, and it's also a great opportunity if you uh, have an interest or, or representative of an organization, if you'd like to sponsor Wealth Day, you can set up a booth in the Rotunda with 30 or 40 of the, the most really passionate and exciting um, environmental and wealth-related organizations in Kansas. It's a great opportunity to really get engaged on a variety of levels. And they have cookies. We do have cookies. <laughs> and there will be a wonderful local food lunch. It's just a pretty good day all the way around. Yeah. So we hope to see you at Wealth Day, and uh, do you have any final thoughts or anything before we call it? Just, uh, you know, you can follow me on, uh, you, can f you can find Kansas Interfaith Action at kansasinterfaithaction.org, on Facebook, also at Kansas Interfaith Action, on Twitter at KS underscore Interfaith, and I also have a Twitter feed at RebMoti, R-E-B-M-O-T-I. Love to hear from you. If any of the things that we talked about today resonate with you, please send us a message. We'd be happy to get together. All right. Thanks so much, Cody, for joining us. And as always, thanks for helping us lead the way to a clean energy future. Thanks.